Have you ever wondered what goes on in the mind of an INFJ when they get angry? Let's take an intriguing journey into the world of the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, a popular personality framework. The rarest type in this spectrum is the INFJ, known for their depth of feeling and intuitive understanding of others. They are often perceived as mysterious, partly due to their complex inner world and partly due to their rarity. Now imagine this enigmatic INFJ in a state of anger. What could possibly be happening within them? Why is it crucial to comprehend their anger? Here's a light-hearted way to look at it. INFJs are like a good mystery novel full of unexpected twists and turns, and their anger is the climactic plot twist you didn't see coming. Understanding an INFJ's anger is like decoding a complex puzzle, one we're about to solve. So, what truly happens when an INFJ gets angry? Let's unravel this complex emotion in the world of the INFJ, a personality type known for its empathy, intuition, and introspection. But when anger seeps into their emotional landscape, it takes on an entirely different hue. Imagine a serene lake, its surface smooth and unbroken. This is the INFJ in their natural state, calm, tranquil, reflective. But when a stone of anger is thrown into this peaceful body of water, the ripples it causes are felt deeply. The first ripple is self-blame. INFJs have a tendency to turn their anger inward, blaming themselves for any conflict or issue at hand. Picture a mirror reflecting their anger back at them, intensifying the emotion rather than diffusing it. This self-blame can be a heavy burden for an INFJ to bear as they strive for harmony in their relationships and their environment. Next, we see passive aggressiveness. This isn't your typical eye-rolling or sarcastic remark though. For INFJs, passive aggressiveness is a defense mechanism, a way to express their anger without direct confrontation. It's like a smokescreen obscuring the true intensity of their feelings while signaling that something is amiss. Why do INFJs internalize their anger in these ways? It all comes down to their innate desire to maintain peace and avoid conflict. They're like diplomats of the emotional realm, constantly negotiating between their feelings and the feelings of others. But this internalization can create a pressure cooker situation. Yes, just like a pressure cooker, INFJs keep their anger inside until they can't anymore. They bear the heat, the stress, the pressure, until it becomes too much. And when the lid finally blows off, it can be a sight to behold. But we'll delve into that explosive release of emotion in the next scene. So, what can we take away from this exploration of the INFJ's anger? It's a complex, deeply personal experience, one that is as unique as the INFJ's themselves. And it's a reminder that even the calmest waters can hide strong currents beneath the surface. Just like a pressure cooker, INFJs keep their anger inside until they can't anymore. Ever noticed how an angry INFJ prefers solitude? This behavior is not random or unexplained. It's a characteristic reaction of an INFJ personality type when they face anger. Think of it as a hedgehog curling into a ball when threatened. The spines on its back are a protective mechanism. Just as an INFJ's retreat into solitude is a way of protecting themselves, it's a self-preservation technique that allows them to process their emotions in a safe and controlled environment. INFJs are introspective beings. They have a natural tendency to look inward to understand their feelings. So when anger strikes, they isolate themselves to examine their emotional state. They believe in resolving their issues internally before addressing them externally. Yes, it's not about ignoring or escaping the problem, but about understanding it. Remember, INFJs are not just introverts, they are intuitive feelers. They experience emotions deeply and intensely. This intensity often leads them to ruminate over their feelings of anger. It's like a scientist in a lab, meticulously analyzing a specimen under a microscope. They dissect every thought, every emotion, and every possible reason behind their anger. Rumination for an INFJ isn't just a process. It's a journey through the labyrinth of their mind. They traverse through their thoughts seeking answers, finding patterns, and connecting dots. They are not merely brooding over their anger, but are trying to understand its roots, its triggers, and its implications. But it's not always a lonely journey. INFJs often seek the companionship of their most trusted confidants, someone who can understand their complex emotions without judging them, someone who can provide a listening ear, a comforting presence, or just a silent acknowledgement of their struggle. However, it's important to remember that every INFJ is unique. 
Their way of dealing with anger can vary based on their experiences, their coping mechanisms, and their personal growth. Some INFJs might retreat into their shell for days, while others might bounce back quickly. For INFJs, solitude is their fortress when anger strikes. It's where they seek refuge, where they mend their wounds, and where they find their inner peace. But most importantly, it's where they come face to face with their anger, confront it, understand it, and eventually overcome it. Did you know that an INFJ's anger can also manifest physically? It's quite fascinating, really. When an INFJ is angry, their body can become a battleground of emotions. Their heart rate may increase, their palms might get sweaty, and they might even experience headaches or stomach aches. It's as if their body is trying to communicate their anger in ways words simply cannot. Physical manifestations of anger are not unique to INFJs, but what sets them apart is their tendency to suppress these feelings. They may not even realize they're angry until their body starts to react. Imagine trying to keep a lid on a pressure cooker. Eventually, the pressure has to go somewhere. For an INFJ, it's often directed inward, leading to self-destructive behaviors. Let's paint a picture here. Consider an INFJ named Alex. Alex is a classic peacemaker, always smoothing over conflicts and avoiding confrontation. But when Alex is wronged, he swallows his anger, the injustice gnawing at him from the inside. Instead of confronting the issue, he may turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms like overeating, excessive drinking, or even self-harm. You see, INFJs are masters of introspection. They're experts at turning their gaze inward. But when they're angry, this introspection can become a double-edged sword. They might start to blame themselves for the situation, leading to a cycle of self-criticism and guilt that's hard to break. But why do INFJs do this? Why do they direct their anger inward rather than outward? Well, it's partly because of their strong sense of empathy. They're so attuned to the feelings of others that they'd rather hurt themselves than cause pain to someone else. It's a noble trait, but it can also be a harmful one if not managed properly. So what we're seeing here is a complex interplay between emotional and physical reactions. For these individuals, anger isn't just an emotional experience, it's a physical one too. Their bodies bear the brunt of their unexpressed anger and their minds are burdened with the weight of self-destruction. Understanding this can help INFJs and those around them manage these manifestations in healthier ways. Their anger isn't just emotional, it's physical too. What happens when an INFJ can't forgive or when the anger just blows up? Imagine a tranquil lake, calm on the surface but with unseen depths. This is an INFJ. Now imagine a stone thrown into that lake, disrupting the surface and sending ripples through the water. That stone represents the hurt or injustice that an INFJ has experienced. The ripples, those are the emotional explosions. This personality type, being the empathetic souls they are, tend to internalize their feelings, including anger. They will dwell on an issue, turning it over and over in their minds. But there's a limit to how much pressure anyone can withstand before they burst. And for an INFJ, that burst can be quite intense, akin to a volcano erupting. This emotional explosion can be startling, not just for those around them, but often for the INFJ themselves. They're typically peace-loving and conflict-averse, so when they explode, it's a clear sign that something is deeply amiss. Now let's talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness can be a struggle for an INFJ. Despite their empathetic nature, their strong sense of justice can make it hard for them to let go of perceived wrongs. They can forgive a lot of things, but betrayal, dishonesty and cruelty can be hard for them to move past. Imagine a librarian meticulously cataloguing every book every detail. This is how an INFJ often deals with hurts. They store these incidents in their internal library, pulling them out to analyze and understand. But this process can sometimes hinder their ability to forgive and move on. However, it's important to remember that while forgiveness can be a struggle, it's not impossible for an INFJ. They just need time and understanding. They need to process their feelings, understand the situation, and find a way to reconcile it with their values. When an INFJ's anger explodes, it's like a volcano erupting. But remember, after an eruption, there's room for new growth. For an INFJ, this emotional explosion can lead to a greater understanding of themselves and their boundaries, a necessary step in their journey towards self-awareness and personal growth. 
Do you know the deepest fear an angry INFJ faces? At the heart of an INFJ's anger, there lurks a profound existential anxiety. An INFJ, when angry, often finds themselves grappling with some of life's most profound questions. The nature of their anger isn't just superficial or fleeting, it's existential. This existential anxiety isn't merely about the cause of their anger, it's about the very essence of their existence. When an INFJ gets angry, they question the purpose of their anger, the purpose of their existence, and the purpose of the world around them. They ask themselves, why am I here? What is the point of all this? These questions can send an INFJ spiraling into a state of existential angst. The philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre once said, existence precedes essence. For an INFJ, their existence becomes a question mark, a riddle that demands an answer. Their essence is shrouded in the mystery of their anger, and this mystery becomes a source of existential anxiety. This existential anxiety is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of depth. It's a sign of a mind that dares to venture into the abyss of the unknown. It's a sign of a heart that isn't afraid to feel deeply. It's a sign of a soul that isn't afraid to question. While this existential anxiety can be overwhelming, it is also an opportunity for growth and self-understanding. The existential philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. When an INFJ faces their existential anxiety head on, they can find their why. They can find a purpose that gives meaning to their anger, their existence and their world. And that's the paradox of an INFJ's anger. It can lead them into a state of existential anxiety, but it can also lead them towards self-discovery, self-understanding and self-growth. The poet Rainer Maria Rilke once wrote, be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. This is the challenge that an angry INFJ faces, to love the questions, to embrace the mystery, to find peace in the midst of existential anxiety. Their anger often leads them down a path of existential questions. What's the benefit of understanding an INFJ's anger, you might ask? Well, the answer is twofold, self-knowledge and authenticity. Firstly, self-knowledge. It's a bit like being a detective of your own mind. By understanding the unique ways in which INFJs process anger, we can gain a clearer picture of our thought processes, our triggers and our coping mechanisms. This understanding is incredibly empowering. It allows us to better navigate our emotional landscape, to recognize when we're beginning to feel angry and to take steps to manage it in a healthier way. This self-knowledge also fosters empathy. By understanding our own anger, we are better equipped to understand the anger of others, especially other INFJs. This empathy can enhance our relationships, fostering deeper connections and more effective communication. Now, let's talk about authenticity. Being an authentic INFJ means embracing all aspects of our personality, including our anger. It means acknowledging that anger is a natural part of our emotional repertoire, not something to be suppressed or denied. By understanding our anger, we can express it in ways that are congruent with our values and our personality. This authenticity leads to a sense of inner peace and integrity. Moreover, authenticity and self-knowledge enable us to navigate the world with a calm confidence. When we understand ourselves, we are less likely to be swayed by the opinions of others. We are more resilient in the face of challenges. We can stand firm in our beliefs, yet remain open to new ideas and perspectives. Finally, self-knowledge and authenticity have a direct impact on our happiness and success. When we understand our anger, we can manage it more effectively, leading to less stress and more emotional balance. When we are authentic, we are more likely to pursue paths that align with our true selves, leading to greater fulfillment and success. Understanding an INFJ's anger is a journey of self-discovery. It's an opportunity to gain deeper insights into our minds, to foster authenticity, and to navigate our lives with greater confidence and ease. The more we understand our anger, the more authentic and confident we become. So are you ready to navigate the world of INFJ anger with ease and confidence? The journey of understanding this personality type, especially when they're angry, is a fascinating one. It's like turning the pages of a book that's filled with profound insights, hidden meanings and unique perspectives. And every page you turn, every layer you peel back, brings you closer to a deeper understanding of not just INFJs, but also the intricate world of human psychology. 
Keeping this curiosity alive is what will drive you to explore more, to learn more. It's like standing at the edge of a vast ocean of knowledge with waves of wisdom crashing at your feet. Dive in, swim around, and let your mind soak in all there is to know. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever witnessed an INFJ getting angry? What was your experience like? How did it make you feel? Share your thoughts and experiences. I'm eager to hear your stories. Every perspective adds a new dimension to our understanding. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content like this. We're constantly exploring different personality types, their quirks, their strengths, and the unique ways they navigate through life. It's a fascinating journey, and we'd love for you to join us on this adventure. Also, we have a free ebook for you. It's about the quieter personality types, their unique strengths, and how they make their mark in a world that can't stop talking. It's a delightful read, filled with rich insights and profound wisdom. You can download it from the link in the description below. The journey of self-discovery and understanding others is a lifelong one, but it's a journey worth embarking on, because understanding is the first step to acceptance. It's the key that opens the door to empathy, compassion, and ultimately, to a richer, more fulfilling life. So keep the flame of curiosity burning, keep seeking, keep exploring, keep learning. And remember, every step you take on this journey is a step closer to understanding, acceptance and self-growth. Stay curious, keep exploring, and remember, understanding is the first step to acceptance. See you in the next video.